Hello everyone, welcome yet to yet another Cave Divers React video. This one today, we will be uh, talking about a video that was recommended to us. And by the way, before we get started, my name is Gus and... Woody. That's Woody right there. So the two of us are going to be reacting to this video, uh, just like we've done a bunch of times before. This will be... Um, you know, kind of a, a little bit different than what you did last week, which was the, the shark video. Yeah. By the way, great job on that. That was awesome. Um, hard. But just devastating. Hard to watch. Right? Yeah, it's tough. That's brutal. It's tough. Absolutely. So we will be uh, reacting to this one again. This was a, a, a request. And here's the interesting part about this one. I haven't seen this one either. Oh, cool. Okay, good. Yeah, so we're both going to be reacting at the same time on this one, um, see what uh, what we think about it. But um, yeah, this happens to be, I think it was an incident, kind of like the Rescue 911 videos that we've been doing, okay. Woody. Um, but this was, it's kind of like the same version of the program, but in Europe. So that's why I, I didn't even know about it. Okay, cool. So somebody, uh, yeah, somebody sent it to us. Uh, so we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. So let's start the video and um, watch. A thousand or so. The equipment they use, well, it may be cumbersome on dry land, but it enables them to move around safely in an alien and potentially lethal environment. It's a world where you have to rely on your friends. Divers always go in pairs and your partner or buddy is the only person who can help you. Our first report starts under the icy waters of Scarpa Flow in the Orkney Islands, north of Scotland, where for many divers, the crystal clarity of the water makes up for its freezing temperatures. We got invited, by the way, next year to a trip in Scarpa Flow. We both declined <laughs> to know. go because it's freezing. Since uh, earliest times, seafarers have used the safe natural anchorage of Scarpa Flow. Looks awesome. Norse warriors sheltered here. More recently, the Royal Navy used the area as a base in both world wars. I have comments already, but I don't want to interrupt. The On the 21st of November 1918, a week after Armistice Day, 74 ships of the German Grand Fleet steamed into the flow, escorted by the Royal Navy. They were to be held here through the long winter, while politicians decided their fate in Versailles. But on June the 21st, 1919, fearing another outbreak of war, the German commander ordered the scuttling of the fleet. Wow. Well, he was right. The war happened, World War I, so... Seventy years Sank later, the, the rusting hulks of seven of these great warships still lie in the flow. From all over the world, divers come to explore these historic sunken vessels. It was September when a group from the University of York Diving Club came for a week to investigate the wrecks. I'm literally cold it was the afternoon of the third day. <laughs> They'd already done a deep dive to 150 feet that morning. Wow. Two of the most experienced divers in the group, Chris Aspinall and Adrian Angel, had been working all week as a buddy pair. It was a rather nice day, uh, relatively calm. We'd done a rather deep dive in the morning on one of the large battleships and then the afternoon dive was planned on the Carl's Rue which is um, a small destroyer class German uh, battleship he's so excited which lies on his side uh, and this is a nice picturesque wreck uh, she's in 24 meters of water and uh, the no stop time for that is 32 minutes and I must emphasize you need to ascend at 32 minutes if they stayed underwater for more than 32 minutes exactly, they'd have to come up in carefully calculated stages to prevent decompression sickness, the bends. So they're NDL, no decompression It's a limit. process that takes time and valuable air. All right, let's talk about this, because again, a lot of the people watching these videos are non-divers. So what happens is, I'll, I'll just give my quick explanation, and you can add more uh, if I miss on this one. But what happens is, when you go on a dive, your body starts absorbing nitrogen. But it doesn't start absorbing nitrogen, you know, at a level where you couldn't come to the surface immediately right away. You have some time before your tissues need mandatory stops to decompress. And the time that you have a depth 
depends on how deep you are. So in this case, this destroyer these guys are going to seem to be at a depth of 20 something meters, which means their bottom time is 32 minutes. There are no decompression limit time, which means they can go down, stay for 32 minutes and come up without having to have mandatory uh, decompression stops, right? You, we will still do a stop for safety, a three or five minute stop, depending on your depth. You typically just follow your computer, although this seems to be back in the day without computers. They were just using tables. Mm -hmm. um, however, once again, the important part of it is they're saying go down and be back in 32 minutes or else you're going to have to have decompression stops, which will need extra gas because now you have to stay down there. You cannot come up or you risk getting decompression sickness. That's an excellent explanation. I would think that was spot on. Okay. <clears throat> the uh, the part I want to emphasize, though, is what you said at the end. I was waiting for you to get there. So, yes, it is true. You can come up at any point in your dive if you stay within the no deco limits. But what you said, Gus, that's important. I don't want to minimize it, and I have not seen this video. If you miss that, you have to stay down longer. So now, do you have enough air? Yep. To stay down longer, two things would happen. Either you don't, and then you're going to run out of air, or you're not willing to run out of air, and you're going to come up and potentially get the bends. So the result is what I just want to add to what you said. If you don't do these stops, the nitrogen com bubbles are expanding out of solution in tissues, faster than your body can handle, faster than it can off-gas through the normal bee breathing process, which causes something called the bends, and there's various levels of the bends, everywhere from neurological damage to affecting your brain to potentially an embolism, which yeah, is deadly. Death. So that's why Gus is bringing this up. That's the result. So it's a balance. Do I have enough air? Can I off-gas so I don't get the bends? Now I... We'll see where this video heads. I've yeah. not seen it either. By the way, the other thing your explanation w was right is whenever you hear the term tech diving, typically talks about dives where you do have those decompression stops, right? Recreational diving is when you stay within those limits. So anyway, let's keep watching and see. Again, I haven't I seen this either. Dived the wreck several times before and, and, and knew it reasonably well. Freeze. So I could point out to Chris the relevant uh, features on the wreck, specifically the guns or yeah. where the props were, because a wreck can be an exceptionally confusing place to the uninitiated. It just looks like a pile of scrap. That day it was high tide, so the wreck was actually in about 28 metres of water. Okay, about 100 feet. We were uh, towards the end of the dive when we found uh, a d blast proof door of uh, a turret located towards the bow on the Carl's Rule. It was in exceptionally good condition. On closer Three inspection, tanks, yeah. it did look initially as if it was brass. What if it might be argon, The hinges were, were badly corroded. Yep. So we inspected the door, had a good look around it, and then I manoeuvred off towards one of the forward guns. to turn round and there was Chris violently swimming backwards because the door was uh, come loose and was heading towards the seabed come loose a, a large plume of the door obviously is extremely heavy and I guess there wasn't anything in back of him so he why I don't but let go of it I'm thinking right get out of the way right just drop it I'm thinking yeah. Unless he was war I don't know why I don't I'm not I'm not following what happened there. Let's maybe we should So that's what I'm saying. It fell off like from the wreck into the seafloor. No, but he was f violently falling to the seafloor, the guy said. Yeah, with the door. Like the door was Well just let go of the door. Push yeah, get out of it the way. Yeah, that's yeah, what right. I'm saying. Okay. I don't know. So and sand and quickly finned back down to see Chris uh, amongst what was now exceptionally low visibility. So at that particular time, I was unable to ascertain any problem. He was pointing vigorously. By this time, the silt was settling, and I was able to see the door actually falling right across oh, his leg. Man, on his leg. 
Dang. His, his eyes had virtually popped out of the sockets and were embedded on the front, on the inside of his mask. Uh, the pain and terror held within that look just told it all. He was in severe pain and we had to do something straight away. By this time, time had elapsed and we were way over the no stop limit. Yikes. And considerably into decompression time. So my first reaction was, no problem, Chris, I'll just quickly lift it off you. Really, because of its size, I didn't think it was a problem. Heaved and heaved. And to my uh, dismay, it just didn't move. Damn. Not a millimetre. It was just static. It was as if it was bolted to the deck. Are there three divers? I mean, initially there were several people jumping, but it seems like at this point they are the only ones down there. Because they say we were past the 32 minutes, so maybe the other divers are already on the boat. And they they came back within their time. But it's hard to so, imagine that there's a floor, uh, there, there's a door on the, like, floor or whatever, and it doesn't even move. Like, how heavy? Pure steel. So my yeah. thoughts are, my reaction at this moment, I'm trying to meet, to visualize everybody. If I'm the guy lifting up the door, I'm not. I'm not. So I want to react to that to that moment. Think about this, Gus. This is yeah. pretty wild. This is what went through my mind. I try to lift it off of you, off of your leg, and you're in pain. Yeah. Two things. One, I'm praying your dry suit is not ripped there. Yeah. You're gonna freeze. Two is I can't lift it off your leg. So now in my mind, I'm saying, all right. I'm past my no deco limit and I'm going to have to go for help. Now, do I then go up for help knowing I left you down there? Do you have enough air to make it for me to do my deco stops Oof. and go to the surface and get help? Or this is a tough one. Yep. Do I blow off my deco stops, risk getting the bends, get help, they get me out, somehow deal with me that I'm probably bent, and they go back down and get you. I have not seen this. I'm telling you, this would be the immediate yeah. stop and think, Woody, what are you going to do? And it's a tough situation. I mean, it's I, true. I, mean, I, I, I guess it I, all depends on how much deco. You, like, if I have four have minutes to, of deco, I'll blow it. I'm not going to stop. I know. But I, because you may run out of air down there. You. I left you down there. Yeah. So I would have looked at your gas and said, maybe I had a note like, all right, you got enough gas. I'm going to go up. Then maybe it's enough for me. To, but yeah. you see what I'm saying? So in that moment, wow, we got to be thinking about the science of diving as it relates to where what's going on with Gus. Yeah, but it, it what you. I'm saying is if you had like four minutes of deco, wouldn't you risk blowing it and yes. just going to the surface? Definitely. Yeah, I for would. four minutes, yeah. I mean, if you have 44, then right. th that's, so yeah. This is, and this jump is, immediately on O2. I mean, once you make it to the surface, hope for the best, but it would be hard. So this is what they're... Tough situation. What right? I would be thinking about it. We'll see what this guy was thinking about. That's when I really started to worry. 80 feet above them, all the other divers were rising safely to the surface. We were at 80 feet. There were times when I thought, what do I do? Should I just leave him and go to the surface and Perfect. raise the alarm? But for sure, he would have just drowned. I was quite prepared to take my twin set off, leave him with my air supply, yeah. and then do what is a free ascent. ascent. From 80, 80 feet. And that means straight from the bottom to the surface with no air because I was into decompression time. If I'd have done a free ascent, statistically the, the chance of me reaching the surface conscious are very slim. It wasn't a good option because I wouldn't have been able to probably raise the alarm. Other options are if the door won't come, up, come off his leg and I'm unable to lift the weight, then do you watch him quietly or frantically drown and die can you stop it one other thing oh, this is a lesson boy. this is a lesson and i know gus we you've been through this lesson with me before you do a dive like this it seems like they were carrying delayed surface marker buoys did you see those things floating on them yep so yep. what we do for those of you that aren't divers is we basically 
have a briefing before we go on dives. And we set up with the captain or the boat crew. If we send up a surface marker buoy or two surface marker buoys together, that indicates we have an emergency. So a dive like this where they know they're going deep and so forth, that probably would be pretty beneficial to include as part of your briefing. Now, out of fairness, it's easy to sit back and react. Of it's course. It's easy to be critical. Or in the future, right? Okay, but in the moment, did they do that? Did they not do that? But I wonder if you would have taken that guy, you, you know, got that guy's surface marker buoy and yours and tied them together and sent them up, if it would have looked odd, even if you didn't brief it to the other divers, like, whoa, yeah, that's they a good just point. shot up two. That's kind of weird, and they're not up yet. Something must be wrong. I, exactly. That may be a – it's easy to think of it now, by the way. I don't know if I would be able it, to do that it, down there. It really shows, like on our last trip when we went yeah. to Florida and we dove with, with Jimmy down in, in, in South Florida, that was part of the – of the briefing right. was if I see two SMBs on the same line, we're coming in. Not on purpose, of course. I tangled one of them. Right. We so well, that, but that's, that, that, that's that's what just... I was gonna say. We we <laughs> tangled at some point. We tangled two of them, and the, it was like two minutes tops that I'm there, like trying to untangle them. We were we were tangled together, and boof! That I just see the dive master it. come in with a massive O2 tank. Yeah, she was to awesome. see to see what you know what was going on. But it was so quick. And I remember thinking yes. like, oh, man, let's untangle it because I don't want them to jump in thinking there's a problem. And yep. within two minutes, they were in the water. You know, what's up? Like, here yeah. I am. Um, the guy had, you know, a, again, a, a massive tank. Like, it, it was ready to go. Um, so, yeah, if they had briefed this, th that could have been an option. Shoot the two SMB. Somebody jumps in. What's going on? Look at this. And now you have two people trying to lift the door. Yeah rather than one. And again, even if they didn't brief it, it would be odd to fire yeah. two up together like they're purposely tied together. I think if I was on the boat, it something would dawn on me to say, there's got to be something wrong. Anyway, let's let it run now. We well, should, And by the way, we're trying to stop it, guys, at logical points. Right. Some of you will give some criticism, <laughs> and I, I take we always take the criticism sure. as a way to learn, but... Remember this when you're watching these. We are doing this to react. We right. are doing this to give feedback, hopefully for other people to learn. Not just to be critical. That's easy to do. It's more that I learn while I'm watching this, so it's selfish. For sure. And we would like other divers to learn from it. So yeah. we are going to stop them. And that's the purpose of these oh, reactions. Oh, do you chop his leg off? For sure. Oh, so the guy... Just threw in the last option. He says, or maybe uh, chop his leg off. Okay. Yikes. Not much of a leg now. Three, three minutes over. Or if you're Donald Cerrone, just leave him behind. Yeah. Over. Three minutes. Adrian had tried repeatedly to move the door, but couldn't. By now, they were both so short of air, he had just one last chance. So I thought, right, this is it. My complete being was focused on the removal of the door. Squatted down and heaved and heaved. In doing so, I just moved it a fraction, which spurs you on, the adrenaline's going, you're really working hard, and it just gave it enough to give it a bit more, and I held it and locked off. Then Chris just crawled across the seabed, free of the door. The sense of relief as I looked at him was, was overwhelming. Wow, that's we, awesome. He was free, <laughs> although by now I could actually see his leg, which was severely broken. Unfortunately, our problems didn't end there. At that time, we were seriously into decompression time. Could imagine and having a would decompression have been unable with a broken to leg. return to the surface safely. Ugh. Adrian had to calculate the speed of the ascent to stop tiny bubbles of nitrogen forming in the bloodstream and giving them the bends. Too fast, they risked unconsciousness or even death. Too slow, and they'd run out of air. Whew. Their friends were powerless to help. They'd already done two deep dives that day and were too inexperienced to risk returning to the seabed again. They could only wait. We'll have a, keep a good look out for them. My arms were becoming tired, my legs were becoming tired. No surface support. More air as a result of fatigue. By firing, I don't get No, that. I know, but uh, right. But at the same time, no surface support. Like having a, yep. a dive master or somebody... Go like, back. you know, we, in Florida, it was awesome because our dive masters were instructors, too. Yep. 
Um, so they so they will be ready to jump in and help. They weren't diving with us. They were just there in case something happened. Um, but yeah, sure. it's it, also you know one one lesson. I was going to add this on the last topic was when we t- were talking about SMB surface market buoys. How in a lot of cases people feel like, look, if their current is not strong, I'm not even going to bring one. And this video is a good example that not only you should always have one, you should maybe have two of them. Great point. Right? So that's a great point. I, you know, again, though, that things were a little less sophisticated back in that day. For sure. So the crew or the other divers are unsure of exactly where they are in their off gassing. It's a second repetitive dive. And we used to use dive tables, which, by the way, ended up being dramatically revised because a lot of people were even being bent following the no deco limits. I was right on those tables back in the day. So this is a tough, tough situation. Now, what I'm wondering as the vid, cause I'd like to set up the next part that must be going on. If, if one of them runs out of gas, yeah, I guess at that point I either can pass an octo or a primary, or they're going to buddy breed. If both of them run out of gas, this is an interesting situation because the one guy has a broken leg does he at that point ditch the other guy's weight? You have you to see the size of the weight belts. Yeah, and humongous. send him up because listen, if you do send him up after ditching those weights, he's going to ascend rapidly. He's got a dry suit on. He now risks an air embolism or the severe bends. But the alternative is drowning. definitely drowning. Yeah. So it's like us. I know if I leave you here, you're going to die. That's a hundred percent. Yeah. For sure. And maybe I am going to have a 50% chance of you dying if I fire you up. Right. I would write you a note. Uh, like, I, Okay, so I just, yeah. again, we're reacting. What are you going to do? And here, let's see what happens. Come on. Play. Constantly looking at the diminishing air supply and the time we eventually got to the conclusion of the stops. We were so fine to the red, we were in vapors. And as a result, we would have probably had it minutes or seconds left. Wow. They made it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Where? Down here! Adrian, where the hell have you been? You're 23 minutes late! Chris has broken his leg. He's Real what? bad. Well, way over the top decompression wise. He's broke his leg? Yeah. As best as you can. Wow. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, as best as you can. Is that bad? Right, don't worry, Chris. We'll have you out in a minute, mate. The leg was shattered, actually, in approximately uh, six places, just below the knee. And Damn. looking at the x-rays, it was as if somebody had taken a toffee hammer to so a piece of toffee. Can we stop tough... it for one second? I'm sorry, everybody. Listen, I want to commend them. Woo. They decided to ascend properly. So they made a wise decision based upon the air that they had and made it. That's incredible. I mean, I guess they were saying to themselves, let's just go as far as we can go. And unless we are out of air, like both of us, we took our final last breath. We're not going to ditch and go to the surface. Yeah, let's so not they panic. They stayed calm and didn't panic and said, we're not out of air. Yes, we're on vapors, but we're not out of air. That's right. That's pretty amazing. That is That's awesome. staying calm. That was a very, very well done plan of action yep. in an emergency. So we'll be quiet and let you hear. With a stuff. broken leg. With a guy in pain with a broken leg, man. Yes. Wow. That's a that's bump. legit. Amazing. Being just hit it, and it had just completely shattered into small pieces. Two years later, the club went back to Scarpa Flow. The door, which had so nearly killed Chris, was brought to the surface. Why? And I guess months after the accident, you, you, you come to realise that you were very, very close to being in a fatal situation. But you've also got to look at it that it was it was unlucky that the hinges were in such a state that, that, that we didn't know the situation with the door. We didn't know it was going to come off. It, it, a chance in a million. I still enjoy diving. It's changed my attitude in the sense 
I don't go under items anymore. I, I stay well on top of things. Right. It's obviously made me Let's think learn. about how lucky I was. But thankfully we came out of it. And I'm just glad that Adrian was diving with me and managed to save my life. For his bravery, Adrian received the British Sub Aqua Club's highest award. I've subsequently seen the door wow. and I can't move it at all. Unbelievable. <laughs> Through his back. The strength to lift it just. It was one of the things. It, it, it eventually. It just came. I mean, it the is adrenaline lighter is going. The water, but it, it's still. The exertion. Oh, the mental concentration is, is focused on that one particular task. And that's all you have. Amazing. That's it. Yeah. I mean, you know, bottom line message just to end this is that I believe they did stay calm and did react in a calm, rational manner. And that saved their lives. Panicking where they would not have maybe waited and tried to do the proper ascent probably would have killed them. Well, I'm incredible. Um, worth so whoever sent us the comment to watch that yes thank you that's awesome thank you absolutely um no it was it, it was uh very very impressive and and that guy was able to get the door this lodge but i think we can all learn again just by watching this and even operators right from 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 boats uh they can learn how to add these things to their briefing and have support ready you know because these things happen we just saw it happen and what and one other thing to add is that i do know that through the georgia aquarium when we go out on dives in the open water we actually have different color surface marker buoys so uh, if we send up a green one things are okay we're just on a normal stop if we send up a red one Hey, we have a problem down here. So that's another thing you can think about. For sure. Absolutely. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in to yet another Cave Diver Reacts video. Uh, hopefully, you know, if you've been binge, binge watching these things, uh, you have subscribed by now. It really helps us out because it yes. allows YouTube to promote this content to other people out there that hasn't seen it before. And uh, if you have any recommendations, as we mentioned before, send us an email at info at divetalkmedia.com. We also oh, have okay. new emails, in, in, info personalized. At Info at divetalk.com. You don't have to use media anymore. Just info at divetalk.com. We now That's own right. the domain, divetalk.com. Moving on up uh, in the world. And uh, we also have even our own personal uh, emails now, right? Gus at divetalk.com and Woody at divetalk.com if they want to reach out to us. I guess separately. I, have, I don't know if we set those up yet. We need I think, to. I think I think we oh, do. Did we? Okay. Yeah. So there you go. I think we do. Um, but um, yeah. So if you have any comments or questions or concerns or recommendations like this video, please go ahead and send it send it to us because we do love reacting to your videos as well. So yes. for now, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one. See you, everybody. Thank you.